We gather. Travellers, questioners and seekers. We gather, hungry and thirsty, looking for the place. We gather in the story, in the promise, in the word. We gather as the shadows lengthen, the darkness skulks, the questions hang. We gather at a table, a table prepared with broken bread and spilled out wine. We gather as the words fade, as the song spoils, as the light shrinks. And each of us in our own places, from where all the stories become one, and all the paths merge and the moments blend, and we find ourselves this week together with the towel-wrapped, bread-breaking, wine-spilling saviour. It's a holy, broken place. And here, here is the time we gather together. Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday communion service. These are the most unusual of times. For the norm is not now possible. We gather around the Lord's table on this holy night and it's always a special time. But sadly, we can't gather together in person tonight. Instead, we're all in different places. Different places, but still united by one God, whose spirit is with us all. So I hope that when we come to share the Feast of Holy Communion, you feel able to join me with some bread and some wine from your own cupboard, knowing that the Spirit blesses you and our holy meal. We read from John chapter 13 at verse 5. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I'm doing, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you'll never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. It was in the beginning time when the Creator's imagination pulled apart the waters of birth. The spirit of love shaped a place where the word would one day take flesh and meal and serve. Serve those who broke and betrayed that creation. It was the time of bondage when the word of freedom found its way onto the lips of an Egyptian prince. And such was the promise of the word that it tore open the seas and shaped a gateway to the new world, a new relationship with love on the other side of the water. It was in the middle of the wilderness, held by a wild man. He found the water, offered a new way to freedom and poured it over all who came and called them through repentance into a new life, a new relationship, a new way of serving creation. It was by a foreign well, in the middle of the day, that the living water was first tasted, shared between a prophet and a Samaritan woman. In a common meeting place, amid sin and heresy, culture and religion, and even when the thirst was great, it was never felt again. Read more from John 13. Jesus said to him, One who's bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, because he's entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was about to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. We join in prayer. When we find the kingdom in the most generous of acts, silently arriving in a cup of water, may we pause and recognise where we are, saviour of basin and towel. Let's join in prayer. When we find the kingdom in the most generous of acts, silently arriving in a cup full of water, 
May we pause and recognise where we are, saviour of basin and towel. From the moment it's shaped in an act of giving and the kingdom unveils what it's really about, may we pause and recognise what's happening, saviour of basin and towel. When the words have gone, and the doctrine spent, and the act of giving is all we have, may we pause and recognise the truth, saviour of basin and towel. May we bless the brokenness of heaven, which is fought against the words of religion, that's too often lifted itself up, and given itself power, and lauded itself over others we might pause in this place where she reveals herself in acts that are self-giving and sacrificial, serving the world and all within. And may we draw breath in the truth of it all, a kingdom unlike any other, humble, forgiving, serving, redeeming. When the darkness shifts and the truth is revealed, and the moment arrives and we do not understand, may we pause and recognise the moment, saviour of basin and towel. Amen. We continue from John. After he'd washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, that's what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things... You are blessed if you do them. As is our tradition, the table is set, awaiting you as guests. So we cannot gather together for now. We gather instead through the power of technology. I hope that you can pull up a chair in your imagination and feel welcomed. It would not have been much of a table if there were no stories to go with it. If it was just bread and wine, would it have been worth passing on from generation to generation? If it was just another Passover, all of history would not have been refocused on this reinterpretation. Around this table are gathered so many. As we set it, we remember the prodigal, Returning to a feast where a reluctant brother and a gushing father are rejoined by a lost son. A feast where not everyone was happy. Not everyone understood. Around this table, we remember the boy in his basket. Five loaves and a couple of fish. And the generosity that set them apart. Where some find a miracle in the quantity of food and others in the grace of sharing. Around this table, we remember the Saviour in fields of gold, taking the wheat and sharing it with the disciples, and the Sabbath dispute between hunger and holiness, and those who refuse to see the connection. Around this table, we remember the Zacchaeuses of this world, the tree climbers, finding themselves invited to their own homes for a kingdom feast, about which everyone gossiped and stoked their righteous anger, yet through which they discovered an insight about the difference between their holy righteousness and the tax collector's generosity. Around this table, we remember the Pharisee and the woman, one offering a meal, the other a sacrifice, one who wanted conversation and the other who wanted nothing, except to let the world see in the pouring of an expensive perfume kind of guest that they welcomed and how heaven had just walked into the room. A table set 
with stories. And it would be much less of a story if it lacked those gathered around it. The doubters and the sinners, the betrayers and the deniers. For it's in these that make this place into heaven's unique guest list. Here are the least included. The power hungry and the quiet questioner. Those attracted to silver and those who can't bring themselves to speak of him. This, this is the table where love is real. Love invites, love breaks, love chooses, love hosts, love seeks, love knows, and love loves all the more those who gather just as they are, broken themselves, needing a place to belong. And here we belong, O oh God. We give you thanks for your great invitation with our humble thanksgiving. Let's join in prayer. Saviour, may we taste the kingdom. May we speak of remarkable things. Things that we have seen in all our stories that make up this community and shape this table, making it a holy place. May we hold silence, remembering the pain of the world the pain of the choices that you made, that speak of love beyond words found only and fully in the act of broken bodies and spilled out blood, the sacrifice and the scandal of heaven that makes this table a holy table. And as angels sing, and as Pharisees conspire, and as disciples question, and as we wonder, May we voice that holy song that gathers all your people here, broken and least as we are, deceivers and liars, deniers and questioners, singing together, holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And among all the stories, and all the people, and all the belief, and all the faith, may your spirit find her way here. And through our hope and with imagination, shape this bread and wine here. Here with the stories told and yet to be told of the kingdom now and the kingdom still to come. May our table become a holy table because of the people who meet around them who dare to believe that when darkness comes and dare to trust when the light goes out and dare to feast when the taste is gone. We wonder. We wonder what more heaven can do tonight than be broken, be spilled, be shared among the stories, all the stories that we've ever told. At the edge of everything lies this. When we cannot understand the world and the questions it asks to us are never answered. When we can't hold on to the world because it's running out. When we can't hear what's truth and what's lies in a cacophony of conflicting doctrine. When we're fed up with control and the religion of power that decides who's saved and who's not. When we cannot find the words. Words that express our faith any longer within a religion that has lost its meaning. Where we can no longer sit comfortably and feel connected with a polarised world. When we have nothing left to say. And the words don't make any sense anyway. When the story feels like it's coming to an end and the saviour is living on borrowed time. When the darkness has greater hold than the light. And the rumours of conspiracy grow. When the disciples are confused and do not understand. And the Saviour is quiet. With darkness in his eyes. When we feel the crack of a broken heaven. Appearing in everything we thought sure. At the edge of everything lies this. A table. Bread. Broken for the world.
wine waiting spilled out take and eat these are the things of God for you Just as it finished, hardly had the bread fallen to the table, crumbs still tumbled, the air still moved, but Jesus was stealing his way through the twisted olive trees of the Gethsemane garden, followed by some of the disciples. The betrayer had already left, the darkness cloaking him like a sinister bedfellow, pushing him further and further into the conspiracy. Jesus, the one of light, shivered among the trees, seeking a prayer place, to calm his nerves, to rest his wild eyes as they foreplayed the coming hours. Sweat already running through Jesus' hair, he paced between the branches expecting his disciples to watch his back but finding himself on his own. He turned to find them and he did. They were asleep and always spitting with tension he woke them. How can you sleep? What lack of compassion do you have that you can sleep through this night. Hardly had the words fallen to the ground than the shadows crept closer, darker now than they had been, colder now than the night should have allowed. The faces of the guards in the darkness were hardly visible. The conspiracy was giving birth. But from the nightmare, a shadow moved forward and paused as brief as a breath, but it was long enough, long enough for the betrayer to see deep into the eyes of heaven and feel still the love broken, betrayed yet still inviting. As he blinked to break the spell in which the world turned tonight, he kissed the Saviour and the light died. Love one another. Such a simple command. Love one another. A costly demand. Love one another. An example by which to live. Love one another. An ambition into which we grow. So take the affirmation offered and received and grow in love for one another, loving Christ as he loves you. Amen.